My name is Jerry Martyr. This is an old English sheepdog, and his name is Andrew. We want to have a big head. We want to have a pretty expression. The expression is right in here. This is the expression, and it's the fall over the eyes. And we want nice straight legs, and we want to have angles, and we want them to be very square and very bear-like. They should look like a bear. And uh, <laughs> Andrew, I feel like I'm loved. <laughs> New York, one of the greatest cities in the world. Known for its grandeur, its history, and its residents that hail from all over the world. Everything comes in different shapes and sizes here, but there's one thing that is almost universally agreed upon, the love of dogs. So it's only fitting that for over 140 years, this place has played host to the second longest running sports event in America the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Spanning over a century, the essence of the competition has remained the same. It is an homage to the majesty of these animals, an acknowledgement that variety is indeed the spice of life, but mostly it captivates those in attendance and perfectly illustrates the special bond we share with our dogs. On the eve of the 141st edition, Welcome to a competition unlike any other. For an event that began in 1887, it's only natural for there to be those that have been involved for as long as they can remember. Competitors like Pat Trotter. I've been coming on a regular basis since 1958. And uh, let me put it this way, with my legs going south on me, it could be my last two raw. <laughs> She's a junior high teacher during the week, never misses school. Pat is a very successful Westminster veteran, reaching the final on an incredible 10 occasions. However, the coveted best in show title is one that has eluded her. I hope this is the time, finally. But that hasn't diminished her dedication to Norwegian elk hounds, a breed yeah. synonymous with Pat in the dog yeah. community. She's a good girl. <laughs> She's been a handful, I'll tell you. When I first started showing her, I said, if she doesn't kill me, she'll keep me going. <laughs> her whole name is Champion Van Melka's Dagger with Delight. She's a devil and a delight all in the same package. We call her Duffy, yeah. Westminster is the ultimate in the world of showing dogs. A lot of people say it's the carrot that keeps the old donkey going, you know. Let's face it. If you didn't love it, you wouldn't do it, you know? It's just a passion. It gets in your blood. It's like infectious. <laughs> the main event to be held at Madison Square Garden is still a couple of days away. In the meantime, fans have plenty to do as the festivities kick off on Saturday with the annual AKC Meet the Breeds. It's a showcase that features nearly 200 different kinds of dogs and thus attracts enthusiasts that, much like the dogs, cover a pretty wide spectrum of size, shape, and disposition. This is Westminster Week, and everyone who's in dog sports knows that this is Westminster Week. Basically, all year, we're preparing for this weekend. <laughs> Shortly after I got married, my wife and I discussed what kind of dog we were going to get. I wanted a Chihuahua, and she wanted an old English sheepdog. And so, you know, marriage is a 50-50 proposition. She gets what she wants. We had a couple that asked us if they could come into the booth, and actually the guy proposed to a girl. He wanted to have a Newfoundland, and I think he wanted to convince her, hey, I'm ready to marry you, but are you ready to give me a Newf? And she said yes! Yeah. Oh my god! And we streamed it on Facebook live. Today offers a fun way for the fans to interact with the dogs and get familiar with some of the breeds they will be seeing over the weekend. Over 2,800 dogs arrived in New York, all vying for the ultimate prize of best in show. 
With such a large field, the pressure facing the competitors is high. And for some, stress becomes a factor. No, don't do that on the TV. That's gross. <laughs> Good boy. He's working on his nerves for the big show. Yeah. The last time we were here, we took him on a long walk down to, well, we thought we were going to Central Park, but we actually went in the wrong direction. But we walked for about two miles, and he was really nervous at first. But once we got going and he saw that the people were not really paying any attention to him, he, he calmed right down. Yeah, it's fine. But he's kind of skittish. Toby has been the number one slugie in the U.S. since 2014. He is the first AKC champion slugie in history. He is one competition win away from being the first grand champion slugie in history. So in short, Toby's a rock star. He is a <laughs> rock star, yeah. I give you your toy. Are you going to get down? You want to play? He knows his job. So he knows when he's in the ring, he's supposed to stand there. He says he wants his mommy. I think that when he gets to the show, he's going to be nervous like he always is. It's, I hear a pretty intense crowd. Um, and, you know, after 30 minutes or so, he'll probably habituate to it to a certain degree. He's not going to love it. And um, he'll get in the ring, and hopefully <laughs> he'll do his job and stand for the judge. It's fun for us. We want it to be fun for him, too. In 36 hours, Best in Show officially begins. With Best in Show starting on Monday, the weekend serves as an opportunity for some dogs to take in the sights and sounds of the city. That is not the case for the 50 finalists taking part in the Masters Agility Championship. A fan favorite since its inauguration in 2014, the obstacle course requires close communication, so preparation is paramount. Handlers are only allowed eight minutes to practice and memorize the layout, an odd sight, but an imperative step in winning the championship. I'm Todd Hebert from New Hampshire, and this is Addie. Uh, Braddy Addie is her nickname. Athena is her real name. We've been doing agility for a little over four years. Yes. Focus is key. We always got to make sure we keep connected. That's a big part of the agility is staying connected with the dog. A lot of people think the obstacles are the hard part of the game. It's actually the environment. Most dogs do very well in their backyard when you practice this or in their home training room. But when you come to uh, even a small event, never mind a huge event like Westminster, uh, the added pressure, tension, people, dogs, uh, they can get nervous and shut down just like people. Tonight, this is the most fun part of the next three days. It is the agility competition. The handlers are going to have to shut these dogs down just a little bit to make some of these turns, but then they're going to have to let them go wide open, fast. The finish to this course is just going to be exciting. And the first dog in the 20-inch class is Addie, a Dalmatian, handled by Todd Herbert of Barrington, New Hampshire. And let's see how Addie does as the first dog here tonight. Being the first dog at a finals like this is just gonna be tough. Yeah, very nicely handled. So far, a clean run. So far, very nice run. Get down there, get down there. Nice job on those wings. Look at that dog go. That was fun. That was a delightfully entertaining run. And our next dog up is Jack Piper. Bodie. Peach. Shalala. It's just time, it's just time. Oh! There we go. There's that speed. A nice run by Bodie here. Nice turn, another nice turn, really nice. You come to Westminster and you make it to the finals, how are you ever gonna forget that? That's just incredible. And just look at that, what Shalala says, let's do it again, let's do it again. After an impressive final run, the first winner of the year is officially in the books. The overall winner of the fourth annual Masters Agility Championship at Westminster, 
is Trick, the Border Collie, handled by Mr. John Nye. This duo can now celebrate knowing that their job is done. But for most, the main competition is still a day away, and there is much preparation to be done. The Westminster Dog Show is not unlike a beauty pageant in that presentation is a key element to victory. And when one needs to look their best, there's a one-stop shop that provides all the amenities. Look at this row of dogs, all beautiful, all beautiful dogs. It's the Hotel Pennsylvania's Dog Spa. Hey, good to see you. How are you? Look at this beautiful dog. My name is Jerry Grimek. I am the doggy concierge in charge of pooch relations and marketing at New York's Hotel Pennsylvania. Oh, look at these dogs. Hi, how are you? Are you waiting for these dogs? Oh my God, they're so cute. Look, they're all coming up to me. Coming up to me. Hey, look at this little guy. You're so cute, little cute little. <laughs> Who's that? That's Doogie. Doogie? But they call me Doogie. I'm doggy concierge, oh, really? but they call me Doogie. But that's so cute. They love it. I love the dogs. They're so cute. My favorite part about doing this job is meeting all these unique breeds. I think we cater to one of every breed at this hotel. With 1,700 rooms, you could imagine we could host a lot of dogs. Over the years, we've gotten some very interesting requests from owners to make their dogs feel comfortable. They've ordered cheeseburgers for their dogs. They wanted me to bring a pizza for their dog, a chicken sandwich. Someone requested a red carpet to be rolled out for their dog. And a few years ago, someone wanted an opera singer in the lobby to serenade their dog. And we catered to that, and the dog wore a tuxedo and barked for an encore. The hotel is transformed into a palace for the four-legged, and Midtown Manhattan itself has become a hub for Westminster-related activity. For instance, just two blocks away at the New Yorker Hotel, the final preparations for the show are underway. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm Sean McCarthy. I'm the president of the Westminster Kennel Club. We are excited about this year's show. Tom Bradley, our best in show judge, uh, was the show chairman for many years and the soul of how we've put this together as it's evolved in the last uh, 28 years. I've been involved with dogs since 1954. I didn't realize that I'd still be doing this in, nine, in 2017. Bradley, along with other Westminster Kennel Club officials, are meeting with their television counterparts to iron out the crucial details of the broadcast. We would like to bring the dogs in the arena. We'd like to line them up. And then we're going to do the anthem. With the dogs in the ring? With the dogs in the ring. They're going to help. Great. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that happened to me last time. We're not trying to tell you how to do television. But we need to tell you how to do dog show. The people who have the sporting dogs first on Tuesday night, and the people who have the hounds first on Monday night are going to be mighty PO to stand out on that floor for three minutes with nothing going on. They're going to be yawning, they're going to be lying down. I'm not. You mean during the anthem? Yeah. yeah sure. Okay. Well, does it the last thing in the world you want a show dog to do is sit. We won't show them. When Bradley speaks, it's wise to listen. How many breaks do I have? That's what 60 years of experience will do for you. All that time has led him to the highest honor this year, the one judge responsible for deciding which dog takes home the crown. Being the best in show judge is serious business, so much so that the judge will be sequestered in his hotel until the final night when he will see the dogs for the very first time. The most often asked question is, how do you judge seven dogs that are so different? You're not judging dog for, against dog. You're judging dog against the standard. And then it's that extra pizzazz. It's that extra wag of the tail. It's that extra look uh, that a dog has on that particular night that gets it the nod. The 141st year of Best in Show begins in the morning.
Monday morning arrives with the palpable feeling of anticipation in the air. Work crews move quickly to ready the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, for the two-night main event. But in order to move onto the garden, dog and handler will have to win best of three, Westminster's first of three rounds of competition. In 2013, Westminster expanded the dog show to piers 92 and 94 in order to accommodate the thousands of entrants. With over 200,000 square feet of exhibition space, the pier is an unmatched spectacle of dog. Among the first to compete today are the juniors, a class of handlers aged 9 to 18. In this competition, the kids are judged solely on their handling skills and not on the dog. But much like older veteran handlers, a key component is accentuating the traits of their dog while maintaining composure and control. Wow, you've been working hard for this one? Yeah. <laughs> the hard work and dedication required is easily quantified when watching a winner's reaction. You did great! After the juniors compete, it's time for the rest of the field. And keeping calm is the name of the game, especially if you're a slugi, a newly approved breed competing for the first time at Westminster. When we get to a show like this where it's so crowded, there's so many people, um, I bring him here, put him in his crate for a little while, and then we try to get him up and walk around just so that he can see what's going on here and sort of get habituated to his environment. Oh, we're real chipper. We're ready to go. We're at Westminster. We finally made it. And we're getting ready for the breed ring. There are only two Slugies that are present for the best of breed today. She's right there. <laughs> Toby loves her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, we just got up and uh, walked her around a lot and gave her her breakfast. and we practice, but he doesn't always do the same steps. So that's why I get nervous, because I never know what he's going to do, do I? No. My biggest superstition is my lead. Showy wore this lead at Westminster in 1991. And in 1991, we worked, we we won the group, we won the group at Westminster. You're gonna do the class bitch first, right? And then, yeah, so you're first. Huh? You're first. Oh, great, yeah. You know, too much hooping and hollering, though. Old English are very sensitive to hooping and hollering. <laughs> Time for the rodeo. Because the field is so large, the breeds are being judged simultaneously. The dogs that win today are chosen because they best exemplify the standard of their breed, from gait to temperament to size. 2,800 pairs of handlers and dogs will compete this morning, but after this round, only 200 best of breed winners will remain. Thank you. Good boy, Toby. Congratulations. Thank you, honey. Toby won Best of Breed, so he's the first Westminster Best of Breed Sloogie, so very exciting for him. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yes. Well, we're due over at the garden. I'm not sure what time, maybe 6 o'clock or so. But we'll be there. This is it. This is it. I don't get to go to the garden. Nope. Are you this is. Do you watch Bart or no? 
Oh, yeah, I'll go to watch. It's my family. Yeah. He did good. You must have been more nervous than him. I know, because he knows he's supposed to work when he gets out there. It's the, absolutely incredible. The and Super Bowl of dog shows. Yes, for sure. Well, honey, don't cover everything up. Show it off. Show it off. Show it off. Honey, honey, honey. This says Westminster. Oh, okay. Get your thumb off of that. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people here, huh? That's scary. Pat Trotter, Patricia V. Vincent Trotter. She was born to be a star, but she's a devilish one. Like some of those Hollywood girls, she's got an attitude. I'll tell you what, if Dummy doesn't kill you, she'll keep you halfway young. <laughs> it's incredible to be here. I mean, it is shocking to me, the crush of people. This is kind of like the recognition and the culmination of of years of work, and so I'm proud of her. This is the dream of everybody, wow. this show. The Big Apple. Ladies and gentlemen, the 141st Westminster Dog Show. I wish they would just get started, though. <laughs> Tonight's show is a gathering of four groups of dogs, hound, herding, toy, and non-sporting. These groups are comprised strictly of best of breed winners. So we'll look around the backstage and you'll find a who's who of dogs. Take Preston, for example. He's a poolie who is widely considered to be the favorite to win best in show this year. After all, he was the number one dog in 2016. I don't know that I am the favorite, but I'll take it. And it doesn't matter to me because it's win or lose, I'm glad I get to go home with this dog. It had an amazing year last year, and I'm just proud of him no matter what. There's Chucky, a Pekingese bred from a proud lineage of past Best in Show winners. How do you do this again and again and again? Well, I'm just, I'm a dog person, and I raise dogs, and I go to dog shows, and, you know, you try to show your stock and do a good job of them, and hopefully the judges will like them. So, you, you know, it just keeps you going. Each generation is... You know, a new adventure, so. There's also Rumor, a champion German Shepherd who was a finalist at last year's Best in Show. There's going to be some fantastic dogs out there in that lineup, and we're just going to, you know, hope she shows good and, you know, give it, a, give it our best shot and you know, wish everybody good luck that's out there and let the chips fall where they may. Tonight will determine four of the seven finalists that will compete for the top prize tomorrow evening. In a given group, no two dogs are from the same breed, so they're not being judged against one another. Rather, it is whoever best fits the standard of their own breed that will advance to best in show. Tonight is a display of canine majesty, and like any sport, it is rife with thrilling victories. The miniature poodle has won. And occasional upsets. Oh, rumor has done it again. The poolie Preston is second. <laughs> the celebrations continue backstage as members of the media swarm, perhaps in an attempt to learn what it takes to make it this far. We're going to walk back. If you want to talk to me, I'm going to put him in his crate. We just wanted to know if we could do a quick interview. For Where you. did you grow up? <laughs> How old is he? Plan fed. What formula is he? For the layperson, how much work is it to get the coat like this? Just tell me. It's a, it, I mean, it's just something you do every day. You know, you take care of. Medicine. Ultimately, the lesson to be learned here is that tonight is the culmination of so much effort, most of which is invisible to the outside world. May we have the Hound Group in the ring, please? Here come the Hounds into the room. Of course, the Afghan is going to lead the way. Best thing is at Westminster, you got a lot of top winning, a lot of really nice dogs. This is Afghan Hound, number 15. For the 33 hound dogs present here, and especially for their handlers, years of hard work and preparation have led to this moment. Just one judge between them 
and a spot in tomorrow night's Best in Show. This is Norwegian Elkow, number seven. And we have Duffy being shown by Kat Trotter, who's a longtime breeder, owner, handler of top winning Norwegian elk hounds. She's won the group here with her elk hounds numerous times. Some say she's a Susan Lucci of Westminster. <laughs> Pat is trying to reach the final for her 11th time, but present tonight is a breed of dog she has never had to compete against. This is Flugi, number seven. This is Toby, and this is one of our newly eligible breeds. Although it's an ancient African hunting breed. Can jump a nine foot fence. True that he loves Starbucks coffee. <laughs> well, he's yawning right now, so maybe he needs some. <laughs> he needs a cup to go. <laughs> After all the dogs have showed, it all comes down to the judge. One final careful deliberation of the subtleties that sets the breeds apart. In the end, a simple hand gesture points to the final round. Oh, here comes Pat Trotter with the elk hound. Pat Trotter has won the group again with the Norwegian elk hound. That's grand champion Vanmelka's Daggerwood Delight. She's won the hound group and now will have another chance for best in show. I was just overwhelmed. What? <laughs> Me? <laughs> It's been a family tradition for her family of dogs. This is the 11th time she and her ancestors have won the group here. So it's just a thrill, really awesome. Amazing. <laughs> we accomplished a lot this weekend. It's a great experience. I was looking up in the stands at how many people are here. It's like a rock concert. So we had a great time. I'm so thankful for this dog, you know, this once-in-a-lifetime dog who really never lets me down, and it's just a privilege every time I set foot in the ring with him. The road may be over for some, but for the lucky four chosen, best in show beckons tomorrow night. It's Tuesday morning in New York City, the day after four finalists won their respective dog groups to move on to tonight's Best in Show final. Back at her hotel, Pat Trotter is finding practical uses for Duffy's Best of Hound Group trophy. Well, the most important part is the comfort of your dog comes first. Want some water, Duff? Huh? You want some? There you go. They don't ask to go to dog shows and walk the streets in New York with horns blowing and everything else. So you have to make sure that your dog is always first and foremost in your mind and heart, as well as your heart, yeah. Last night was the 11th time that one of this wonderful family of dogs has won the group at Westminster. They've, they've taken me on a great ride my entire life. We're having a good time. <laughs> you having a good time? Yes, you are. I picture her being as good tonight, I hope, I pray, please listen, as she was last night, because sometimes she can really be a clown. Since I was a little kid, this has always been the top of the mountain. It has always been the pinnacle of everything in dogs. Westminster is the greatest show on earth. By late afternoon, hours before tonight's Best in Show begins, Junior competitors have gathered at Madison Square Garden for their moment in the spotlight. What's Corinne? Corinne. Oh, that's oh, Corinne. Okay, that's you. Ah, uh, for phonetics. All right. Yep. Mascon PA. Longview, Washington. I'm going to go in for uh, the junior handling finals. It's been years coming. Um, I've show dog since uh, like seven years now, and five years or five or six at Westminster. So finally, hard work pays off. For Molly Jason, it's been a long road, despite her being only 18 years old. Dog showing has not only been her passion, but also it's helped her overcome crippling shyness that made her youth all the more difficult. A lot of people don't understand how dog shows work, and they just think you're running around with your dog, but it's actually a sport and you develop friendships with all the people you're competing with and you're spending time with your dogs. 
Tonight is bittersweet because it's the last time Molly will show her collie, Mackenzie. I hope my dog behaves and I don't trip and fall. <laughs> Do you have any strategy going into tonight? Just have fun, yeah. In the end, Molly and Mackenzie don't win tonight. But that's not to say that the journey has not had a profound impact on both dog and handler. Even though Molly and Mackenzie will remain best of friends, their dynamic will have a huge paradigm shift. No longer will their relationship have the same intensity that is required for a show dog. Just ask Kent Boyle, who is one of the seven finalists competing for best in show tonight. He and his five-year-old German Shepherd, Rumor, have quite a bit of experience dog showing. They were finalists in last year's Best in Show. We're very thankful that we get the opportunity to compete her again in the Best in Show. And we're just uh, thankful that we have an animal of that caliber that presents herself so well that we're you know, able to give it another shot. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize these dogs that are campaigning like this, the folks that are campaigning them pretty much run their whole lives around just making sure that those dogs are taken care of and, you know, everything revolves around making sure the dog's happy and, you know, What's going in the right direction. By early evening, Madison Square Garden is buzzing with activity as the final three groups of dogs, sporting, working, and terrier, prepare to take the stage as they vie to join Rumor, Duffy, Chucky, and Afton in tonight's Best in Show. Welcome to the biggest night in the dog show world. As unpredictable as adorable, the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show hits full stride tonight. The final three group champions will be decided, and then it's time for Best in Show. Crowd at Madison Square Garden, rooting for all the dogs equally. Interesting to see all the different shapes and sizes. Quite a variety from the size to the colors and the personalities. Everyone supports each other, knows how much hard work has gone behind just getting to the garden. As might be expected of a group final, the dogs on display are stellar examples of what each respective breed should be. No doubt a challenge to judge. The handlers know that their dogs must be near perfect in demeanor and presentation if they hope to stand out. It's the handler's job to, to show the dog to the best of its ability to make the dog look the best it can in that very short window when they're being judged. As the winners are announced, the display of emotion from both human and canine illustrate how a win here can validate years of work and sacrifice. The winner of the working group, the boxer. The boxer, Devlin, wins the working group. This is a dream, you know, it's unbelievable. And Adrian, the Irish center, winning the sporting group. He always gives me a thousand percent. That's what I love about this dog. He, he gives me everything he has, looks at you, and he just tries for you. Tanner, the Norwich Terrier, has won the Terrier group. That'll be our seventh group winner. He's always had that sparkle. He's just. Beautiful breed type. Best in show. It's the garden and anything could happen. Being here is a dream and, and I wish my father had Alzheimer and he did everything for me to come here. And I wish my father can be here tonight with us. This is for him and my whole family down in Argentina. Thank you. With all seven final spots decided, the stage is now set for the main event, best in show, just a few minutes away. Dog Day in Madison Square Garden, New York, brings out champions at the Westminster Kennel Club Show. An American bred poodle dressed like a French housemaid, a Great Dane and a tiny Yorkshire Terrier, with a trailing coat like a college boy. The English Bull, a man's dog, handsome in an ugly way. And here are the six best dogs in the show, winners of their variety groups. Mrs. Sherman Hoyt's white French poodle is now being judged. None so Duke de la Terrasse, known as the Duke, the best dog in the show. Not much has changed in 141 years. Out of my dream. Best in show remains the ultimate prize. This is a special win. For the seven who've advanced to tonight's final, the thrill 
is palpable. We go our whole life to just be in best in show. You know, we all strive to be here. It's the epitome of our sport. Winning best in show is just a dream that most people don't even want to dream about because it's so hard to attain. But we'll have a best in show winner tonight, and that'll be America's dog for the, for the next year. Unfortunately, there is no time to bask in any joy. And yet I have to go, oh, you. go right, it's a good luck. Susan Depew and her terrier Tanner only get a few minutes to rest after winning their group competition mere moments ago. With Best in Show getting underway shortly, there's work to be done, but very little time to do it. Maybe five minutes. We don't get a break. <laughs> but he'll be fine because he loves to do this. Right. Give him a quick drink. Because it's so quick to turn around from group to Best in Show. You know, he's already pretty much ready. Just quick, you know, going through him a little bit. You know, he's already been done out once. So just refinishing him. Three of the seven group winners are faced with the prospect of a quick turnaround. For those that competed yesterday, there's less of a rush to get ready. Nevertheless, having too much time to think about what's to come is a challenge in itself. Pretty anxious, I guess, at this point in time. I mean, a lot of these dogs that are here, David with the peak, you know, I mean, I think he's probably won seven groups here, and, you know, a bunch of different dogs that he's bred, and it's like you're going into the shark tank, you know, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. I judged here a few years ago in this same outfit. So I'm hoping that that'll be good luck. You know, you get into these things, these superstitions, every little thing might mean something lucky. So that's what you hope for. Everyone hopes to reach best in show, but only seven have earned the right to compete for the crown. Soon, they will grace the floor at Madison Square Garden, ready to add another chapter in the arena's storied history and write their name in the record books. Westminster and Madison Square Garden are families. We, we're their oldest client. Dwight Eisenhower was the president of the United States when I uh, came to my first Madison Square Garden. And it wasn't in this building. It was two, two Madison Square Gardens ago. And I'm looking forward to uh, going out in the ring in a few minutes and looking at seven great dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the seven group winners competing for best in show at the 141st Westminster Dog Show. The winner of the herding group, German Shepherd Dog, number 22. Round of applause for Rumor. The winner of the sporting group, Irish Setter, number 14. Here comes Adrian. An Irish Setter has never won best in show. The winner of the working group, Boxer. Here comes Devlin with Diego Garcia. The winner of the Hound Group, Norwegian Elkhound, number seven. Straight down and back, nice and easy to write. Yes. And then the second time you can pick it up a little I'll bit. I'll tell her. <laughs> Come on, nice and easy. A Norwegian Elkhound has not won a best in show before. This could be it. This could be her year. The winner of the non-sporting group, Miniature Poodle. There goes Afton. Don't let the small size fool you. The Norwich is an energetic breed requiring a large daily dose of fun and frolic. The winner of the toy group, Pekinese. <laughs> That's Chucky. But we know whoever gets best in show will be a first time best in show winner. These top seven dogs have made it to the pinnacle of our sport. Every foot has to be right. The performance has to be flawless. The crowd is excited. I'm sure the handlers are excited, but trying to remain calm. Tremendous composure by all of these group winners. Your emotions as a handler travels right down the lead to the dog. Comes down to who tonight is really asking for it. Mr. Bradley's taking it all in again. Like the previous rounds, the dogs are not being judged against one another. The winner is the dog that best represents the ideal standard of their breed. Mr. Bradley's going to the table now, sign his judge's book. Tough decision. Very tough decision. And he worked it over. He thought of <laughs> long time, long and hard. OK. As many of you know, I've stood here in this spot for the last 16 years. 
but I've been holding the trophy, and not the ribbon, and this makes a big difference. It's a great honor. <laughs> The best in show at the 141st Annual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, the German Shepherd Dog. Rumor's best in show. Rumor has it. Well, congratulations, Kent, to you and Rumor. Last year, you were favored to win, and this is your year. How good does this feel? Oh, it's like unbelievable. I gotta wind up uh, just. Maybe not saying a lot, just uh, keep it together. <laughs> okay, great. Sir, what was it about rumor that sealed the deal for you tonight? Well, you know, the, uh, the German Shepherd standard talks about quality and nobility, sometimes unrecognizable, but when you recognize it, it hits you home, and that's what it really is. She is just magnificent. Oh, rumor is beautiful. Whenever she came into my ring, I was always honored to be able to give her Prizes. She's beautiful. She's my next door neighbor. Just hoping they saw what great dogs Norwegian elk hounds are and they'll try to check them out as a possible pet in their home. Next year, I don't know. Our puppies will be young, so we'll just have to see. Yeah. She gave it a good shot, I thought. Yeah, whatever. Call me the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Pretty awesome, I'll tell you what. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Oh. Better, I think. <laughs> Better. Congratulations. Hey, you are such a cute animal. All right, it's one other fun year. That trotter. One of the great dog people in, in our sport. Can this be the time that maybe she'll go away with the best and show how fitting it would be? It's unexpected that a story about a dog show could teach us so much about ourselves. And now, the high spot of the evening, the judging for the best in show. Champion of champions. The dogs might be the main attraction, but it's what they elicit in each one of us that drives this historic competition. This is what we worked all year to get here. And listen to the crowd. Love. Some fun, huh? Can't hardly beat this. Dedication. Congratulations. Thank you, Kenny. Passion. The intense eyes of victory. Perseverance. So proud of you. These are the qualities that drive this everlasting tradition and illustrate why Westminster will thrill, captivate, and inspire for years to come. Good boy. What a wonderful moment of triumph. A story about a dog show? Sure. A story about us? Definitely. <laughs>